Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios and today I wanted to go over uh, how to do selection of units like you would in a real-time strategy game using a selection box. So without further ado, let's begin. Alright, so what I want to do is create a script called Camera Operator, Camera Operator, and create a second script called Unit, Unit. I'm going to open up both of those scripts. It's, uh, all right. So the first thing we want to do is uh, let's do our camera first because our units are reliant on our camera being finished. So we need three variables. First, we need a texture for selecting. When we click and drag, we need a picture to be the highlight box. We need a rectangle to tell what we're what area we're selecting, and we need to tell where we initially clicked. So we need a public texture 2D. Uh, we'll call this selection uh, highlight. Then we need a public static rect. I will. You'll see why we need this to be static later. Selection is equal to new rect zero 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 zero. zero. Then we need a uh, private vector 3 start click so the f initial click position uh, is equal to negative vector 3 dot 1 the reason we do this is because this puts it to uh, essentially like if we did new vector 3 uh, negative 1 negative 1 negative 1 and this position does not exist on screen space or your monitor really so that's why we do that so it's impossible to click there that's why we set it to that it's it's something easy to check against really so we don't need a start function what we do need is a function uh, which we'll call private void check camera and then we need to make sure we're calling this instead of the update so check camera and um, the, before we continue, well, actually, it would make more sense if I did it as we continued. You'll see what I mean in a minute. So let's go ahead and do our click checks. So if input dot get mouse button get mouse button down, if the left click has been clicked, if the left button has been clicked, the start click shall equal input dot mouse position so our current mouse position when we first click else if the input dot get mouse button up so if we release the left click we need to do a uh, small snippet of stuff we need to check if uh, the width and the height are below zero and if so we need to appropriately convert it I will explain what this is after I type it out for you so selection dot width is less than zero and we also need to do if selection uh, it's not telesensing. All right. Oops. If selection dot height is less than zero, what we need to do is do selection dot x plus equals selection dot width, and then we need to do selection dot width equals negative selection dot width. So invert it. Same thing. Selection dot y plus equals selection dot height. Selection dot height is equal to negative selection dot height. So <clears throat> we set that appropriately, and we also need to set the start click equal to negative vector three dot one. So we need to reset it back to our nothingness. I guess is a great word for that. So. Uh, now that we have that, I can explain why we did this snippet of code, why we invert this if the width and height is less than zero. And that is because if I'll do one example, I'm sure that uh, if, uh, if you have any questions on this, you can ask me for more examples. I can do a video on it. But say we click and drag to the top left. Normally, let's, uh, let's make this normally first so that we can identify what I'm talking about. Normally, we click from the top left and drag down. This will give us a positive width and a positive height because down is positive in monitor space or rectangle space, I'll say. So in rectangle space, down is positive on height and right is positive on width. So what if we clicked here on the bottom right and drug 
up. Well, this presents an issue. Now we have a negative width. Let's just do a negative, actually. We have a negative width and a negative height. So we can't have a negative width and a negative height when we're doing checking. If we check if the rectangle contains something, we need to have it positive. So the solution is if ever that the width is negative, if this is ever negative, what we need to do is invert it so it's positive. So if this is negative 50, it's now positive 50. So it's the same exact distance. It's both 50. It's just positive. But on the other hand, before we do that, we need to make sure that we take this x position and move it over to here. So we can do that by subtracting the width. But since the width is already negative, we can just add the width because it's negative. So we add a negative it equals it subtracts. If we add a negative, it subtracts, and it puts us in the right position. Therefore, ergo, uh, we uh, invert it. Make sure we always have positive, and the rectangle stays the same, and our selection shall work. And uh, that's kind of the whole key. So let's jump back into our code, and let's talk about um, updating our selection. We need our selection to constantly update. and uh, so in order to do that, we need it to do. Uh, we need to do if input dot mouse get mouse button. So if it is if the left click is pressed at all, we need to do selection is equal to new rectangle, and we need to do start click dot x. Um, and before we continue, we need to talk about screen space. So screen space. Um, Let's say rectangle space is what we're doing. Rectangle space is this is 0, 0. Positive x, positive y. Now screen space, which we get back from Unity when we uh, do a cast from the camera, this is 0, 0. And this is positive x, or that's positive y, and this is positive x. So we need to invert this y to make sure that this is 0, 0 when we return. So in order to do that, we can uh, create a function. Oh, so many spaces. We can create a function, a static function, mind you. So public static float invert mouse y. And we take in a float y. And what we just need to do simply is return screen.height minus y. That's all we have to do. So now we can do invert mouse y. We can copy this function. So invert mouse y, and we do start click dot y. Now we need to add the width and the height, and we get the width and the height width and the height from doing the current position. So input dot mouse position dot x subtracted by the start position. So start nope, start click dot x. And we have to do the same thing for y. So we do uh, input dot mouse position. Actually, we have to invert it first of all. Uh, remember that. So we invert mouse y input dot mouse position dot y subtracted by invert start click start click dot y. So there we go. Now we have our rectangle. And what we need to do, I'm going to put this on the same line because that always bugs me to have it on two lines. Um, so what we need to do is now to uh, go ahead and set up the unit class. So let's jump over to our unit class. We don't need a start function. What we do need is a variable to tell if the object is selected because it'll be useful for later. So public bool selected is equal to false. So it starts off unselected. And inside of our update, we need to check. We're only going to check if this object is getting selected if it is in the camera's view. There's no point to check any object that's not in the camera's view. So how do we do that? We can do that by saying if renderer dot is visible, that's all we have to do. Um, yeah, that's all we have to do to see if it's in the camera's view. So anyways, if renderer is visible and input dot get mouse button up, so when the left click has been released, we set up a vector three and we call that cam pause is equal to camera dot main camera which is our current camera that is rendering for our world world to uh, screen point this will this is transpone this does a uh, 
this kind of transposes a 3D vector into 2D screen space. Um, you may know this as unproject. So we're unprojecting into, do, into screen space. Anyways, to do that, we just pass in the transform dot ooh, image no, no transform dot position. That's all we have to do. Now, in the next part, we need to remember to invert our y because, like I said, screen space. So we can do that's this is why we made it static camera dot oh not camera camera operator dot invert mouse y cam pause dot y. So we'll invert it. Uh, we should have probably named that static this static function. We probably should have named it screen to rect space rather than invert mouse y because sometimes it's not mouse as you just saw. Anyways, selected is now going to be equal to camera operator dot uh, selection, which is that rectangle we created, contains, and then we need to see if it contains the camera pause that we just unprojected. Uh, if so, so if selected renderer.material.color is equal to color.red. We're going to turn it red. Else, renderer.material, no, not that renderer, this renderer, dot material dot color will equal color dot white. <clears throat> so there we go. Um, so like I said, this was static. The reason why we made this static, this selection rectangle here, we made it static because we only want to calculate it once. We don't want to calculate this rectangle for every unit on the screen. We want to calculate it once and that's it. And then they all can use it. So that's a quick way to just make it static because you're only going to be selecting once. You're not ever going to have more than one selection rectangle. If you do, you're going to have to do a little bit. Le you're going to have to do something else than static. You're going to have to get the instance of the camera. But that's for another day. Um, this is just for one selection, and uh, it is fine with me. So now we can jump back, compile our code inside of Unity, see if we have any errors says we don't have any errors. What we can do is select all our capsules, which are our units, and drag the unit script onto them. And then we can select our main camera and drag our camera operator onto it. Now remember we have a selection texture we need to add to there, so if we grab this trend, I, uh, sorry, you don't have it. What I did is I opened up paint and I created a 2 by 2 uh, 2 pixel by 2 pixel white square. That's it. So grab that white square, drop it in on our selection, and uh, go ahead and hit play. Now when we click a drag, you can see that it's not updating our uh, selection box, which is odd. It's not what we want. So let's go ahead and check why that's happening. It's because we don't have a, we're not even drawing the, the texture. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. I skipped over that part completely. We need to draw our texture, otherwise, we can't see it. So we need a private void on GUI. This is the GUI draw function that we're going to use just to draw our little uh, rectangle for when we select. So if start click is not equal to negative uh, vector 3. Dot one. So if it's an, if we are actually dragging, we need to draw. So GUI dot color is equal to new color, and we're going to set this to white, but have it semi-transparent, so 50% opacity. Um, then we need to actually draw it. So GUI dot draw texture, and we need to pass in the selection, which is the rectangle to draw, and the texture, which we called selection highlight. So selection highlight. Now if we jump back, I'll let you look at that for a second, now if we jump back, compile, everything compiles fine, hit play, click and drag, you can see now we have a box. And it, it selects them after uh, we release the mouse, you can see that, they're turning red after. But um, you can easily uh, update your script to not do that and to kind of turn them red as as it happens and you can do that by changing this get mouse button up just to get mouse button or yeah and that should do it if we compile and play yeah there you go it's updating in real time now uh, that's about it really there's no now about it so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I hope it helps out I hope uh, you make an awesome RTS with it. I decided to make this tutorial because I was making some random RTS myself uh, just for fun. Um, 
I'll let you know how it goes. And I'm probably going to put up more tutorials on stuff I wind up doing in that RTS anyways. So, um, hope you have a good day. I hope you uh, this tutorial helps. If you have any suggestions, let me know. And until next time, have a good day, night, and uh, afternoon, I suppose.